Hello, 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 Karen here. Today I have given up all hope of doing any sort of planning. I have decided that planning is not for me. Now, don't get me wrong. I love, love, love to plan. But when it comes to my art journal, it's more about being inspired and trusting. <laughs> There's trust is a big part of it. Today, I was inspired by uh, a recent purchase that I made. I picked up this collage paper book and I have left a link for this in the description. And these are all just black and white images. It's just gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Since I just got this, of course, I was inspired by it. But I also have um, some other resources here that I picked out for black and white images. This book is 20 Ways to Draw Everything. And of course, you know, you're supposed to draw these things. But I thought, well, they're black and white images. So I could just like sneak these into my art journal, right? <laughs> Another one is, you know, the coloring books. Coloring books are great resources for black and white images. This is one of my favorites, Fanciful Folk Art. It's just got some really great images in it. Oh, there's one that I want to use. And see, that's what I mean about inspiration. I didn't plan. I didn't pick out anything for this. I'm being inspired by what I have. Now, this is another one. This is a black and white uh, stack of scrapbooking papers. And some of these aren't very, I wouldn't call these very inspiring, but I think that they're going to really work well in what I'm going to do today. Alrighty, I have my uh, images picked up that I was inspired to pick. Whether they end up on my journal page or not, you know, we'll just have to see. That is part of not planning. I don't plan on using all of these. I was simply inspired to pick them. And now we get to see what happens. So for step one in this is going to be putting down these whatever whatever parts of these images end up on my journal page. So that's what I'm going to do next. You see what I just did there? So I tore out this, this piece of this paper and then I tore out these little scraps, which, you know, I fully intended to use. And then I saw that the image that I put down in the background didn't completely cover my page. So I had this little strip over here on the side and I thought, hmm, I wonder if that would work. This is part of that no planning magic that happens when you just allow your intuition to guide you.
I have uh, my collaged images down onto my journal page and now I'm going to start to add some color to it. Now normally I use these inexpensive craft paints, right? But these tend to be very opaque and if I use these on top of this, it's basically going to cover everything up. So in some cases I may want that but, uh, and, and if this is all you have, you can water these down and get a similar effect, although it's still going to cover them up. So today I'm actually going to be using fluid acrylics. Now you don't have to get the golden brand. They are a little pricey. Uh, there are some, I think this is like a deco art brand. Um, there's a couple of other brands that you can get. And these tend to be very, very transparent, except for the earth tones. Earth tones are just a different animal, which is one of the reasons I have this little box here with all of my fluid acrylics in it. And I took a black and white image and I put it up here and then I colored each one of these into it. So now I can actually see which ones are really transparent and which ones are not so transparent. And of course I put the a strip of names underneath them. So it's one of the things to know about fluid acrylics is they are thirsty, 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 or rather it's your paper that's thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. So you want to make sure that you seal in everything. Now, if you're working with, you know, glossy images, you're not going to have to seal it because it, that, that glossy finish on top, that is basically the the sealant on the and the and your colors these colors love it when they work on a surface that is nice and sealed in so i'm going to go ahead and go over this with my matte medium honestly gloss medium is going to work better but the problem with gloss when you're working in an art journal is it will make your pages sticky and um well that was a huge problem for me to overcome when i first started art journaling was sticky pages so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, be using these fluid acrylics I am going to be adding a little bit of water to them as well. You could use a matte medium, you know, you could use some other sort of medium if you want to, but I think water works really well. But this is going to need to be dry. A couple of different things that I could do to quicken it up. So I can take my paper towel roll, roll it over the top, get off any excess surface medium. And I can tell it's picking it up because this is getting sticky. And then I can take my heat tool and do a little bit of that as well. And then I'm ready to start coloring. Now one of the things about these fluid acrylics is they are highly pigmented. You'll notice the, the bottles of these are quite a bit smaller than the craft paints and they cost like, you know, five times as much or something like that. <laughs> but you actually get more out of it. So I just thought of a another medium that would work really well for this this technique, and this is these um, water soluble crayons, especially for getting into doing little details. So that's another, you know, thing that can happen when you're when you're working in your art journal. You know, go with whatever in, you know ideas that just pop into your head, and uh, and run with it. Mm -hmm. 